Hello there. So this is going to be my first clip pertaining to some suggestions, some advice. One second. Okay. Stupid uh, webcam want to update. Not going to happen right now. Anyway, this is clip one. Um, and I, I'm not, I have no clue how many clips this is going to be. I have five pages of sort of notes here. And well, whatever happens, happens. Slight, uh, this is more of a slightly extemporaneous type presentation. In other words, I'm sort of kind of making this up as I go. Although I do have five pages of notes. So it's not completely made up, but a little bit less scripted than normal. Um, basically, what did I write here? My suggestion would be a couple things. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through sort of how what I did. I went through each chapter and flipped through it really quickly, maybe in 10 minutes, and then scribbled down some notes. And hopefully that will sort of give, give something for you to work with. My first piece of advice is pick something you enjoy. And there's no point in doing something that you hate, that's boring, that you, you know, exactly, you know, you, you, you no longer have to take your sleeping pills to sleep at night. Um, you know, because you just got this essay topic and that, you know, that puts you to sleep at the end of every day. Um, no, 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 no. Pick something that m motivates you, that you enjoy, that you can actually get passionate about. Okay? Or something that kind of pisses you off. That's another thing you could maybe say. Is something that makes you sort of, um, uh, sort of uh, indignant. Uh, angry, frustrated, you feel an injustice has been done. That's always another great way of picking a topic that can get your passions going, get that pen scribbling away. Because you know you, you're, you have sort of an inner drive to expose an injustice in the world. Uh, that's also another way of doing it. The other thing I, su I suggest strongly is pick things that have lots of information that's readily available. What I'm going to do is when I edit this, I'm going to try, and I hope this works, and I'm going to put across the bottom of the screen the, uh, 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 what do you call those things, uh, the URL, the HTTP thing, you know, the, the um, thing for the, the web page that you should go to at the library. So hopefully that will appear across the bottom down here uh, after I edit this. And type in your stuff into some of those um, library databases. You know, I mean, there's five people in your group. I've manipulated this so that the, every group is five people. It's five you know, across the board. And say, okay, you know, person number one, look at this database. Person number two, look at that database. And in other words, have five, you have five people, so you can, while you're doing your group meeting, you know, do it in the in the uh, computer lab. Each of you takes a different database, and then at the same time you type in the topic, right? So that way, at the same time, you cover five databases, all right? And you're all doing the same thing at the same time. And if all five of you come up with very little information, then my suggestion would be drop that topic, because there's no point in struggling looking for information. It should be that you have tons of information readily available. And so if you don't, don't do it. <laughs> right? Just that simple. Okay, and so I'm going to give you that link. It's to the Brock Library databases. So that's what each one of them is. Like these things like ABI Inform or ProQuest or, or whatever. Is that you're going to type it in and maybe 500 articles could come up. Now that, of course, that's the other thing. If too many articles are coming up, then maybe you want to refine your topic down. You know, focus in on one particular aspect of, of what you uh, previously researched. Narrow it down. But it's easier to start with 500 articles and then narrow it down to, you know, 10 that are very useful than to start out with 10, <laughs> you know. So uh, give yourself sort of a cushion is what I'm saying. And you shouldn't have to struggle. I mean, you shouldn't make this hard for yourself. So pick topics that have lots of information on them, is what I'm saying. And I'm going to give you that link to the database. So that's that. 
Um, there are different ways of approaching this. Um, in an, if this was an entrepreneurship class, they talk about three different ways of spotting opportunities. One way is to observe trends. So look at what's sort of the general direction the world's going and what's changing. You know, how can you uh, solve problems is another sort of generic construct. Or finding gaps. Right, so was, well, everyone's talking about one thing, but no one's talking about one certain aspect of it, so you're going to write about that, what no one else is talking about. Um, that's another possibility. Uh, another way, of course, is to sort of look at everything from a PEST perspective, P-E-S-T, -E -E standing for uh, Political, Economic, Social, and Technological. So political would be something to do with uh, governments. Uh, economic, of course, is all these macroeconomic variables that I've been t talking to you about, so like money supply issues, uh, inflation rates, unemployment rates, all this kind of stuff. Social means anything to do with social changes, right? So this is going to be cultural issues. Um, another big thing is all this environmentalism, right? It's sort of a very hot topic right now. And technological changes. So, you know, the internet and all this type of, you know, internet communication issues and so on. Um, again, very relevant as well. So that's what I started with in page one of my notes. And then, you know, you, you can kind of look at all of that. But, you know, uh, uh, uh. I don't know how interesting that is. That's one way of doing it. Maybe I'll just quickly, you know what, maybe I'll just cover it all and just throw everything at you. And, you know, it's sort of like they used to say, sort of like, you know, you know just do it and let God sort it out kind of thing. You know, uh, what did I ramble on about? I'm going to try and make these about maybe nine minute clips because that way I want to edit these things at the end. Uh, politics. So what did Neil write down here? Scribble down. Well, the carbon credit tax thing is really a hot issue right now. Um, of course, the conservative party, you know, kind of, m m I don't want to say mocks, but, you know, attacks, ridicules this so, so called uh, a green shift issue. So right off the bat, it's got business regulation issues. So that comes up in you know, pollution. That's chapter three of your textbook, page 84. It's got fiscal policy issues, right? Because it's a tax, right? It's a carbon tax. So, so there's taxing issues as well, which of course, when you talk about taxes, you're talking about government budgets and, and so on, right? Because you make more taxes, then obviously your deficit, your budget deficit becomes smaller. So this also has fiscal policy implications as well, possibly. And definitely a political issue, of course. Um, let's see. I mean, economics, I mean, I mean, this is, I mean, there's so many issues. Um, what I would suggest is ask the, the thesis question would be, is the United States headed towards stagflation? Stagflation. Right, which is a combination of high unemployment and high inflation, rapid growth of prices. I'm going to stop this video. I'm going to come back to clip two. I just want to give myself that one minute for playing around with this. I want to add like a title page and all that stuff.